Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you all for coming out and uh, joining us in what promises to be a very um, both interesting and enlightening program. Uh, I've um, had the pleasure of working with Mr. Um, Jabbar about a, two years ago on a, a project that's also dear to his heart um, on uh, the Buffalo Soldiers, and I'll have him say something more about that uh, later. And when the uh, Historical Society called and asked if I would have a conversation about his new book, I was, of course, uh, delighted to uh, come and join him. And um, I, on behalf of uh, the Historical Society and all of you, want to again say welcome, Kareem. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the real subject uh, is the book, uh, On the Shoulders of Giants, um, My Journey Through the Harlem Renaissance. And this is the book here. And, and before you leave, you should have one. If you don't, you won't be able to get out. Uh, <laughs> but um, to turn to the real subject of, of today, I uh, wanted to start off, Kareem, with uh, some uh, little bit more about your background. Uh, most of the articles, et cetera, that talk about uh, your personal biography start off by saying that you're from New York, which is, um, can be a number of places. Where are you actually from? I was born in Sydenham Hospital at 123rd Street and... Um Actually, I think that's Morningside. Manhattan, yes. 123rd Street in Manhattan, Sydenham Hospital, which is um, still operating now, I think, as an elderly care facility. And you grew up there or in that same Harlem area? That yeah, uh, well, we lived on 111th Street, 200 West 111th Street, which is at the corner of 7th Avenue. Uh, but you didn't stay in Harlem. You, um, you left after a while. And um, let's see, we moved uh, to Inwood. Uh, which is just a little bit north of uh, Harlem, uh, Dykeman Street. And um, because uh, all my mother's friends uh, still lived in Harlem, I, I spent uh, still a lot of time in Harlem. Uh, anytime we, uh, on, uh, let's say, holidays and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I was downtown. Um, I had to, none of the barbers uh, north of 155th Street would cut black people's hair. So anytime I had to get my hair cut, you had hair? I had to come back down you to Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I was able to keep a pretty close uh, relationship with, with, the, with the neighborhood. Uh, but there was a time, a very specific time in your life, when you uh, had occasion to have a more focused um, uh, attempt at studying and getting to know Harlem better. Uh, say a little bit about that. Um, during uh, the summer of 1964, uh, it was between my junior and senior in high school, and um, I took part in the Haru Act program, which was uh, started uh, by Dr. Clark, by Dr. John Clark, who uh, was a historian and sociologist. And he wanted to set up a program that could teach the kids in Harlem how to make it a better place. And uh, they offered workshops in just about any discipline you can mention, dance, uh, theater, music, uh, social work. Um, and I, hearing about this, uh, wanted to be involved. Um, I had already, at that point, um, become very interested in writing. And um, they had a journalism workshop. So uh, I, I applied for the journal, journalism workshop, and uh, I was included. And uh, it, w it was a turning point in my life. This was why you were still at Power Memorial? Yes, I was still at Power Memorial between, between my junior and senior years. Ah. And um, you said it was a turning point in your life. What made it such an <clears throat> uh, important... Hello? Uh, oh, you all got enough pictures. <laughs> you all got enough pictures. Yeah. <laughs> what made it so, uh, such an important uh, turning point in your life? It was a turning point for me because um, I, I, prior to that, I never really had understood why Harlem was an important place for black people. Um, I didn't understand uh, exactly what the history of it was and uh, why pl black people ended up there, how they ended up there, or anything like that. And uh, I, I had uh, the opportunity to write about Harlem every week. And uh, the, the interesting is, thing is uh, the journalism workshop was situated in the annex building to the Y, which is right down the street from the Schomburg Center. Mm -hmm. Uh, the old building. Okay. And uh, so I ended up, uh, they, they say, well, you got to go down the street and look up this subject. And at that point, I started uh, s 
studying about um, the effect of people like Marcus Garvey, uh, Adam Clayton Powell Sr., Adam Clayton Powell Jr., um, different people who, uh, through their activism and agitation, um, carried forth the, the whole cause and purpose of uh, the civil rights movement. And it just, it just opened my eyes to, to so much. Uh, further on, uh, after attending UCLA, I was able to, to study about Frederick Douglass and, and other people like that. But uh, the Schomburg experience and uh, my attempts to uh, convey uh, what I knew ab about Harlem uh, that summer really just opened me up to the whole, um, to the subject and, and the process of, of finding out about it. One of the things that I found surprising in the book, and I hadn't realized before about you, I, you didn't start off planning to be a basketball player. Oh, no, no. I, I, when I started my sports, uh, my love of sports, I, I wanted to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Robinson was my hero. Um, I listened to a lot of the games uh, on radio with my mom, and my mom's best friend, uh, Mary Mitchell, who used to take care of me uh, before I started school. She was a big baseball fan. She lived right up on St. Nicholas Place. And uh, she would take me down to the polo grounds. Uh, I got to see Willie Mays play his, the first year that he played. And uh, sometimes we'd get on the bus and go across the river to Yankee Stadium. I, I got to see Joe DiMaggio play his last year. And of course, I don't remember any of this, but <laughs> I, I, I know what happened because I'm still in touch with, with Mrs. Mitchell. and. Uh, she, uh, she reminds me of some of the things that we used to do. Um, and you had a very um, unconventional reason for deciding to play basketball seriously. Well, um, I, I don't think it was unconventional. Um, I, I was like seven or eight years old when uh, my mom took me to see the movie Go Man Go, starring Sidney Poitier, and it was about the Harlem Globetrotters. And I saw Marcus Haynes, uh, and no one could catch him when he had the basketball. Uh, I thought he was just e extraordinary. And uh, at that point, I, I wanted to try to play basketball like that. Much to the chagrin of my neighbors who uh, got upset when I would practice basketball in the hallway. Um, <laughs> they had to have a few words with my mom who told me to take that outside. But uh, Marcus Haynes, it, there's, a, there's a scene in that movie where um, uh, Abe Saperstein tells him, okay, if you think you're such a great ball handler, bring the ball past me. And it was in a, in a tenement building in Chicago. And uh, Marcus Haynes does it three times in a row. And I was like, wow, I gotta, I gotta practice that. And um, after playing Little League, um, I continued to grow and uh, basketball started to loom. It's, uh, <laughs> it's making a little bit more sense than playing baseball. Mm -hmm. um, you it, uh, subtitle your book, um, you, the, My Journey Through the Harlem Renaissance, and um, it's a very important period, not only in African American history, but American history, and I uh, was wondering if you would, first of all, just uh, for those in the audience who don't know, and I see a number of young people here, uh, say a little bit about what was the Harlem Renaissance. Well, the Harlem Renaissance was the uh, explosion of uh, black uh, success in, in a lot of the performing arts, literature, uh, sports, and especially music um, that happened as black people accumulated in, in the Harlem uh, neighborhood. Um, it was caused basically by an insect, the boll weevil, which uh, infested the southern uh, cotton crops and destroyed a lot of the, uh, the uh, cotton uh, crops for uh, an ongoing series of years, which forced a lot of blacks to have to look for employment in, in other areas of the country. And it uh, was part of one of the things that started the great migration of blacks from the South to the northern tier of the United States. In addition to that, uh, people from the Caribbean also came. My grandparents came uh, to New York in 1917 from the island of Trinidad. And uh, because of that, uh, you had a, a large uh, West Indian element uh, in that black migration uh, to the northern tier of the United States. World War I came along also at that same time and uh, cut off uh, European immigration to America and uh, created a demand for manufactured goods that couldn't be met uh, in Europe because the, the 